welcome to this episode of our Accelerated ID series. My name is Shantae Skoldager, and I will be your host for this session today. Uh, but today is a special day because we have St Stephen Seberin, who is a story ninja. So Stephen is an expert in e-learning. He often works in Storyline 360 and Rise 360. And if you are one of our students in our Instructional Design and Tech Accelerator uh, program, you might recognize Stephen's voice because Stephen is the creator of our storyline and our RISE lessons. So Stephen's been working in e-learning for about 16 years, and he works with both companies and individuals to help them achieve their e-learning goals. So we are in for a treat today to have Stephen here with us and share his e-learning experience and wisdom. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. Hello, everyone. Well, Stephen, hey, would you, can you tell us like how you got your start in e-learning? Like how did you end up as an e-learning developer working in Storyline and Rise and things like that? Storyline had a fast come up in 2012 when it came out. So mm -hmm. kind of late 12, early 2013, I was kind of getting my feet wet, wet with uh, Storyline 1 and uh, it, it was a good choice. It's been uh, quite profitable as a freelancer, even as someone who went back to corporate land slash freelance since 2013 on and off. Um, it's it's been really, really good to to stay articulate focused. So, Stephen, since you've been in e-learning for a couple of years, we won't say a long time since you've been in e-learning for a hot minute. Have you seen organizations use e-learning or how's it changed over time? Like, What's your experience been? I think for the most part, my experience with e-learning, like in a corporate setting or any setting really is just to make um, their employees better performers. You know, that's that's really the idea. Um, you, of course, traditionally, what do we think about training when we go to a job? You have a classroom, a ground class. Uh, and you have someone in front of you, but as it turns out, it's more cost effective to do a lot of asynchronous training, self-paced learning. So since the pandemic, have you seen, has there been an increase in your business as a freelancer, people requesting e-learning modules being created? Absolutely. Absolutely. As more people go remote or even hybrid right now. Uh, there's a need just to have uh, someone who is just really sharp when it comes to both uh, ID and development, you know, so uh, you could be one or the other or, or both, you know, it's, it's very valuable if, uh, if you know both or a lot of tools, which of course you'll, you'll pick up in time. No one's asking you to like know it in the first year of being in an ID program, it just comes in time and when you get the space and the headspace to just really get into it, you know? Have you seen, so I know, Rise, like when Rise first came out, I, you know, I looked at it, I played with it, I didn't give it a lot of attention. It is a very easy platform to use, but it seems like I'm seeing it more and more being incorporated into the learning ecosystem. You know, like companies are starting to use it because it's really easy to build in, to create in. Or as a freelancer, are you getting more rise jobs or more storyline jobs or how is that netting out? I would probably say storyline is still the main, but rise has risen, you know, pun intended. <laughs> um it's uh it's a good tool honestly it's just the trade-off if if anyone here is familiar then you know what it is uh for the unfamiliar it's more um it's like a more limited version of storyline you get so many of the cool tools from storyline but there's the trade-off for for speed so um you don't have to do as much finagling with a slide uh well, it's not even slide based it's like vertical scrolling just like a regular web page mm -hmm. um yeah you lose some of the the customization i i should say if if anything but if you're in a situation where the wow factor the deep customizations aren't pertinent and it's really about expediting some training and we just need to get some cool interactions going from the interaction library they have for rise 360 then great rise might be uh, the best tool for the job 
Yeah. How about how about we take a look at at some of the projects that you brought? How does that sound? Absolutely. Yeah. So this is one of their modules, one of many that I uh, developed. See this on maybe another example where we just point out some of the course controls, which is a great thing to have. You don't always need to, but um, if you put it out there for your own storyboards, uh, you'll likely have people going, oh, that's nice. Let's let's do that. Let's draw some arrows and tell people how to prepare for the learning. So that's that's what we did here. Just click anywhere to get going. And then the, the layout will just vary every few clicks. Uh, a photo to the right, photo to the left, and text vice versa. Uh, custom menus, always always a great thing. Uh, I build in shortcuts with keyboard uh, shortcuts for accessibility purposes. So M, the letter M as in Mary or menu, uh, popped open the custom menu from the right. And then I have just a bunch of text objects with hover uh, states versus the stock menu. Uh, nothing wrong with using the stock menu. It's faster, it's easier. But uh, if you're looking for that extra nice, then go ahead and build yourself a custom menu via the Slide Master. You know, it always it always puts you ahead of the pack if you know how to do a nice custom menu. Uh, clicking out of there, you can use your arrows to navigate or just click videos and whatnot, just custom tabbing. It's very sparse. That's the way they like it. So it's not horribly exciting, but for the client, this meets their needs. They, they like simple. Um, they like accessible. So you see the accessibility icon, global icon for accessibility. We just have it to be revealed if someone just needs to tab and, and hit enter on their keyboard. So uh, maybe they just can't use a mouse. So the learning is still there. They can observe the appropriate action to scenario and they're able to move on. Um, more simple layouts, more tabs, uh, locked interaction. They got to click all three. And then a little exercise just to reveal some information through checking, little wipe animation, little free text area, additional resources, and you're done. You have a little download notes area. That's the random stuff I just typed a moment ago. I can download it with the JavaScript trigger. That's just one good example. Um, Storyline uh, probably didn't need to be the, the format for this. It could have been a rice course in my opinion, but they wanted Storyline. When you're first getting started, do you feel like JavaScript is a must or is that something that you develop over time? It would be over time. It's a whole other concentration. There are JavaScript developers out there and that's a whole other area not even e-learning related. Um, you won't use it much, really. At most, I just use the print command, which is just a line of code I have saved somewhere that I just paste into a trigger window, and that's it. Um, you will run into some custom needs eventually, if at all, um, but it's nothing to, to lose sleep over. If you really want to pick it up, you could even Google some examples and save them to a notepad file and customize them accordingly. Nothing to be concerned of if you're early right now, just learning storyline. Awesome. So Stephen, whenever you're working with a client like this one and they're building this design, how does that work? Like, did they give you a storyboard? Did you create a storyboard together? Or was did they just give you a project brief and say, get to work? How did that work? It was a team effort you know, one person pulling items together and just putting out some sample layouts and then me taking that, modifying it a little bit and a few small iterations and the storyboard, again, that's a whole other person on the team. If you're fortunate, you don't always get to be on the team where everyone has a proper lane that they're really good at. You might be that same person for all of it, but. Uh, I always say that as as an ID, you might be the e-learning developer, you might be the facilitator, you might be the LMS administrator, yeah. because we wear all the hats and it's all it's always defined differently in every organization. So that's can we can we take a look at a at a rise? Absolutely. So this is a longer page than I'm used to putting for an intro page, but they always wanted a disclaimer for all the various lessons. I'm uh, following the the custom 
text up here and then our menus down here, which you could click here or just click start at the top, which will start you at the top of that course tree from the bottom. And uh, here, here it is. You got a, uh, you got your main header, your lesson count, photo, text, continue, text, continue, <laughs> image, text. And then, Hey, look, we got a, uh, we got a interaction point. This is the accordion interaction in, in Rise. That's the official name, the accordion. And then you just kind of click through all that and learn you something there and move on. This takes a mere matter of minutes versus having to make something custom like this in Storyline. Having to do an accordion in Storyline is a lot more manual. There's no template. Um, I've done that before a number of times, no fun, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> when you do get the do rise, it's like, cool. I don't have to make this myself. I can just use the pre-populated template they have or web part, um, or interaction part and, uh, just paste in my text and be done within minutes. So that's definitely a plus, uh, same thing with tab interactions. You don't have to make this a storyline. They have it for you. You can just paste in your header, your text, find an image, hit the center alignment tool they provide for you. And, and that's it. Um, any other cool web parts here? Uh, looks almost the same, right? Oh, here we go. A marker, uh, an image map, or there's an official name for it, but, uh, you just plot little markers on there and you paste in the text and the little edit bar to the left when it flies out with your eyes editor and it does all the fancy stuff for you. This again, only takes a matter of minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes at most. You could do a little slideshow of products. Maybe you're selling some soft drinks or something <laughs> and you're just going through a line of products and yeah, again, minutes. So yeah, definitely, definitely explore rise. If you haven't done it yet, if you haven't taken the series yet with this program, definitely, uh, check it out. You'll, you'll be happy. You learned it. It's a great skill set to have for your portfolio. So we've got these two audiences of people considering and or working towards instructional design. And as we know, more and more instructional design jobs are requiring us to do e-learning. You know, 10, 15 years ago or 10 years ago, that might have been separated a little bit more. But now we kind of wear all the hats, <laughs> really. Uh, so what would be your number one tip or piece of advice for those who are trying to get skilled up in storyline or rise um be patient with yourself uh of course you want to be that unicorn when you're wearing all those hats that a lot of job descriptions are wanting um but even though even those posts sometimes you'll find out in reality that uh it's more dependent on just a few tools and not everything they just want to happen to have someone on their team that maybe can have some type of skill level with all these other tools. But yeah, start small, start with Storyline. That's the core tool. Then I would say maybe uh, Rise is next. Of course, if you're good at layouts with uh, Photoshop and Illustrator and Design, I would probably rank that third. Uh, we have ancillary tools like Camtasia and Beyond for animation not necessary to get an e-learning job or instructional design job, but it, it definitely helps. It de definitely puts you ahead of the pack. So uh, when you feel like you have the, the space and the time to take that on, get your free trials, check those out, play with them. They're not horribly difficult to learn. Well, thank you so much for joining our community today and sharing some of your e-learning experience and some of your project examples. It's always so helpful for our aspiring instructional designers to see real work from people who do this work day in and day out. So thank you for just making the time and the space to be here and share with everyone. I really appreciate it, Stephen. Thank you all for having me. I'll see you soon.